Sarah Dawn Bluer, and I'm here to do your periodontal consultation. That's great. I heard that you have gum disease, and you were told that you need gum surgery, and you're looking for an alternative. That's right. I know you've probably been told about what gum disease is, but if you don't mind, I'd like to review that with you so I can, I can talk about your periodontal treatment options, and especially why people are choosing laser periodontal therapy as their periodontal treatment of choice. Okay. Let's take a look at this picture chart. This is a picture of what a healthy tooth looks like. This is what you see when you look in your mouth. That's the tooth. This is the root. This is the bone, and the gum lays over the bone and attaches to the tooth just above the bone level. Between the gum and the tooth is a pocket or a space. We measure that using a ruler. We call it a probe, which is in three millimeter increments. We measure between where the gum attaches to the tooth and the top of the gum. In a healthy situation, those pockets are very shallow. Really, we'd like to see them at three millimeters or less. In this picture, we have a healthy two millimeter pocket. What happens is the bacteria that's naturally in our mouth sticks to the teeth and lives off of the food that we eat, producing this white filmy stuff. That's called plaque. Plaque is soft, we can brush it and floss it away, but we're only human and we're going to miss some of it. The stuff that we miss is usually down below the gum line and in the hard to reach areas. What happens is the bacteria that live inside of the plaque irritate the gums and the gums get a little bit puffy or inflamed and what we have is some surface inflammation. This is called gingivitis. Most people have some inflammation or gingivitis going on somewhere if not everywhere in their mouth by the time six months rolls around since their last cleaning. That's why we recommend that people with gingivitis get their teeth cleaned twice a year. What happens if plaque sits there for long enough? Eventually it turns hard into barnacles of calculus or tartar, same thing. Now the bacteria that live inside those barnacles will eventually destroy the attachment between the gum and the tooth, opening up a deeper than normal space or pocket. In this picture we see a five millimeter pocket, allowing the bacteria to then start attacking the bone too. When we have attachment loss and bone loss, this is called periodontitis. This is no longer a surface problem, it's a problem going on down below the gum line, deep below the surface. And so a regular surface cleaning really doesn't do the trick, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Now the problem with deep pockets is they're harder to keep clean than the shallow pockets are. In this picture we have a six millimeter pocket and more bone loss. Now the issue here is if we have a six millimeter pocket and the gum started up here, and we have two millimeters of damage at the surface, we really have about eight millimeters of attachment loss. The reason why the gums recede is that this very inflamed tissue is easily damaged when you chew and brush your teeth. In this picture, we have an eight millimeter pocket, a lot of bone loss, and a whole lot of recession here. Recession is very common for patients who have gum disease, but it doesn't always occur. The big concern with periodontitis is as the pocket gets deeper and you lose more bone around the tooth, the tooth can actually become loose and you can lose a tooth or teeth as a result of the disease. Let's take a look at this picture while we're talking about some of your treatment options for periodontal disease. Basically we have three. Conventional periodontal treatment includes scaling and root planing, otherwise known as deep cleaning, osteosurgery, otherwise known as gum surgery and laser periodontal therapy, otherwise known as LANAP, or Laser Assisted New Attachment Procedure, the first and only university researched and FDA approved laser periodontal treatment, requiring a specific laser and patented protocol to achieve it. Okay. Let's start with scaling and root planing. Basically with scaling and root planing it is a deep aggressive cleaning. You're numb during the procedure so that we can get down to the bottom of the pocket and do a real thorough job cleaning the tooth. Now the problem is that we have very limited access to get down to the bottom of the pocket and we can't see down there so we're basically working by braille. So we're likely going to miss some of the calculus especially in the deeper pockets. Even in conjunction with the use of medication, we don't expect to see a strong fibrous reconnection or any bone improvement. If after scaling and root planning, a deep pocket persists, the next conventional treatment option is to do gum surgery. Basically, if we still have a six millimeter pocket and we cut the gum here and take this piece away, we've left about a two millimeter pocket behind. The goal of gum surgery is to create shallow pockets with the hope that we can slow the progression of the disease process. 
basically it's the intentional reduction of the height of the gum, which doesn't look pretty and leaves the root sensitive to temperature and more prone to getting cavities. The problem with periodontitis is that most people don't find the treatment options appealing. And unfortunately, there is no cure. Even the laser isn't a magic wand. Like diabetes and high blood pressure, we can get you to a healthy level, but then we need to work to maintain you there with regular and frequent cleanings. Once a periodontal patient, always a periodontal patient. You can be treated, but it requires maintenance to keep you at a healthy level. And if you've had gum surgery and we've already cut the gums, if after some time a pocket comes back, well, we can't keep cutting you. Eventually we run out of something to work with. Now the difference between gum surgery and laser periodontal therapy is basically the difference between treatment by amputation versus treatment by regeneration. With laser periodontal therapy, there is no intentional reduction of the height of the